before you leave the house, we want to make sure you get a proper meal. We're talking fast, fresh, and delicious. We're, We're Mom, Mom and Dad. Dad. And this is your all-access pass to the hottest, spiciest, tastiest club in town. The, the Supper Club. club. Alright, Daddy-o, tell us about tonight's headliner. Tonight we have striped bass. Ooh, yum! Did you catch that out back in the river? Mm, no, we're not going to be having river fish tonight. Uh, we're going to be using Alamosa striped bass, which is local here in Colorado. Fun Ooh. fact, the prisons fish them. What? The prisoners work on the farm. They're over there, they're the hands. So. Bet that's a stinky cell by the end of the night, Dad. Yes, sure will be. Let's dive right in. So we have our headliner here. First thing you want to make sure that the eyes are not murky. It's that important. Also to make sure that your fish is rinsed completely. It's descaled. That's going to get in the way of your knife. First thing you're going to do is you're going to make two cuts right around the gills. All right, so always make sure to wipe your knife down after every cut. So I always like to leave that side on so you have a little bit of leverage for when you go to make your incision on this side of the fish. You can see exactly where the spine is. Put the heel of your knife in. Lock in your knife into the spine of the fish. I usually just come right back, right back against your spine. And that way, all you're really left with is this guy right here. All right, Dad, we have hit the segment where you have broken it down. What are we doing next? So now we're going to be finished taking off the bellies. We're going to be scoring the skin so that when we cook it, the moisture has a place to escape. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to take off the belly. Is there any point at which you would eat that belly? Certain fish, yes. But nice, not. nice big fatty fish like salmon or tuna, something with a little bit more fat in it in their diet so their bellies are nice and fatty. Take your knife, and this is going to require a very sharp knife. You're going to come down, and you're going to score from top to bottom. You don't want to go too far into the meat. Uh, fun fact, if you have a dull knife and you're cutting vegetables or proteins, you can actually bruise the food, which can then affect the flavor. Uh, imagine that food has like a cellular wall, and if you slice through it with a nice clean knife, you're actually going to get a cleaner flavor than if you have a dull knife because you're actually going to bruise it. And a lot of the times it can release different odors. This fish can get bruised and actually become mushy. With our Alamosa striped bass tonight, we're going to be serving it with caramelized beets, radish, fennel, coconut puffed quinoa, and chipotle yogurt. This doesn't look like your daily dose of beets. I don't know what is. Mm, you haven't seen me in the studio then. All right, next we want to get our beets working. They're going to take a little bit of time, a lot longer than even the fish to cook. It's really hard to put in a lot of flavor in beets themselves. You want to steam them, not boil them. So what's really nice is a pressure cooker. Using a pressure cooker with just a little bit of liquid, a little citrus, these guys in here. I'm going to season with salt and pepper. We just need a little bit of water. So what that's going to do in the pressure cooker, it's going to help it develop steam. And the steam is how we're really going to cook the beets. I'm going to turn this on manual. So it's pretty much just high pressure setting for 17 minutes. Now if you're doing this in an oven, uh, it's probably going to take an hour and a half to maybe two hours. Uh, but that's why I really like having the pressure cooker. What we have here is a breakfast radish. So we're going to have the fennel served two ways, sliced very thinly, take the top. These are great for garnishing, so we're going to reserve these. So now we're going to use a mandolin to shave the fennel, so we're going to garnish the fish with this. So pretty much this has got a really thin blade, so you can get something that you're really going to have a hard time doing with your life. I just love quinoa. Mom, quinoa. The taste of it, the smell of it. Mm, it's effortlessly tender. How you're going to get it there is by having a two to one ratio to grain to liquid. So we're going to be cooking ours in coconut milk. So we're just going to get that going. It's pretty easy, pretty standard stuff. You just really bring it to a boil, take it off the heat, let it simmer for 15 minutes. I have my coconut milk here and we're going to bring it to a boil. First thing I want to do is I want to season with a little bit of salt. Right, we want to cook salt into the quinoa. And then before this gets hot, we want to have 
our quinoa in it. We want the quinoa to come up to a boil with the liquid. It will cook unevenly if it's not um, brought up together, right? Because you can imagine it could pretty much be almost like mushy overcooked on the outside and raw in the middle because it hasn't had a chance to come up and heat up evenly. Now that we have it all buzzed up, thanks to mom, this is gonna bring to the dish is a lot of acidity, a lot of heat. I really enjoy having a nice balance of, of both in most of my dishes. All right, now, now our beets are ready, good to go. All you do is wipe it off. All I'm gonna do here for serving is just quarter them. And now that our quinoa has cooked all of its liquid out, we're going to let it sit, steam a little longer, and then we're going to fluff it once it really sets and finishes steaming. Alright guys, so now we have our quinoa steaming, our beets are cooked and cut, the fish has been cleaned, and all we need to do now is sear it. Rosemary and thyme, pepper, salt, and some oil. Make sure that your pan and your oil hot before you add your fish. The key to really crispy skin, here's the big secret, don't touch it. Once it's in there, once it's cooking, do not touch it. So you need to let the skin start to cook, get crispy, and it's going to separate itself from the pan. If you put it in the pan and you start trying to move it right away, you're just going to rip it and tear it, and then it's going to be not fun, because even though ripping in a tearing is a lot of fun, it's not good for skin. Have our fish here. Now I'm going to season the meat. Now the secret to this is while it's cooking, you'll be able to see on the sides, it almost look like it's caramelizing right on the side of the fish. That's a good indicator that you're starting to get that caramelization so the skin will kick off so that you don't really have to take a guess that if it's ready to be peeled off, you'll know. Okay, now the fish is gonna be sitting here searing. Now I usually cook about 80% of the fish on the skin side. I don't flip it until the very end. And what that's gonna do is it's really gonna protect the actual fish itself from becoming overcooked. Fast is always served through. You have to cook it all the way through. You can't serve it medium rare or medium, but you can overcook it. You can make it dry. The texture can become crumbly. That's not what you're looking for. We're looking for buttery and flaky. Try to keep an eye on this on medium to low heat. So just let it, let it sit there, take its time. So when we flip it, we're going to be adding a little bit of the butter, a little bit of the herbs, and a little bit of fresh citrus. And then we're going to let it finish cooking on that side. I'm going to put the heat off. I usually take the heat off and I'll add all these ingredients and let it sit there and pick up the aromatics of the, all the different ingredients. I think right now we're looking pretty good. A lot of the proteins are starting to cook along the side. Right? Flip it over. I mean, that looks nice. So now I'm going to turn it off the heat. We're going to hit it with a pat of butter. Earth, right on top of the butter. And citrus. So now we've added our herbs, our lemon, and our butter. So this is ready to go. Now I always try to pat my fish dry after I cook it. Kind of like pat out any of that excess oil or fat you necessarily don't want on the plate. All right, Dad, it smells really good. I'm hungry, I'm ready to rumble. How do we finish this up? All we have to do is plate it, so let's get after it. So now we're gonna add down our yogurt, and then we're just gonna pass it, and then we're gonna add bass, quinoa, our beets, following it up with our radishes, and then our shaved fennel. Garnish with a little bit of chive and a little bit of our fennel fronds. Striped bass with coconut quinoa and chipotle yogurt. Mmm. So something I really like about this dish is that it's super light and you're not going to feel like a manatee hitting the club after dinner. It's really important. Yeah, Mom. I don't know you feel like a manatee after meals, Scott. Sometimes when you cook with a lot of cheese, 
Let's dig in. Yeah, let's get the perfect bite. Nice and crunchy. Oof. Effortlessly tender. Yep. Spicy and acidic. We're gonna fight over the rest of this. Yes, we are. Thank you so much for tuning in this week's episode of The Supper Club. We'll catch you backstage next week. That's good.